On July 1st, 2025, a telescope in Chile spotted something unusual, a tiny speck darting through the sky faster than almost anything ever tracked. At first glance, it seemed to be a comet, but within weeks, data showed something stranger, that its light didn't follow the rules, that mystery grew into one of the biggest questions in astronomy. Are we watching a wandering comet or a machine from another star on a deliberate path? Imagine something arriving in our solar system so fast that even the pull of the sun can't hold it in place. That was the first major surprise with Three-Eye Atlas. It wasn't slowly wandering in from the outer reaches like a normal comet. Instead, when astronomers in Chile first pinned down its path, they measured it moving at more than 200,000 kilometers every single hour. At that speed, it wasn't circling around waiting to be tugged into an orbit. It was rushing straight through, set on a course that guaranteed it would leave again. That alone made it rare enough to deserve special notice. When new objects appear in the sky, scientists usually calculate something called orbital eccentricity. This number tells us how stretched out a path is compared to a circle. A perfect circle has an eccentricity of zero. Most common asteroids and comets have values between zero and one, which means they loop the sun again and again, bound by gravity. But if the value shifts above one, it means the object isn't tied down at all. It has too much speed, too much energy, and its path is open-ended. Three Atlas didn't just cross that threshold. Its eccentricity placed it firmly beyond one, signaling that it belongs to a tiny class of interstellar visitors. This wasn't a neighbor from the Oort cloud or the Kuiper belt. It had started somewhere far away, crossed empty interstellar space, and was simply cutting through before being lost again. To see how strange this is, think of the countless icy fragments that orbit here at home. They fall into predictable families. Short-period comets swing close every few years. Long-period comets can take thousands of years to return, but they still belong to our sun. Even asteroids that drift close to Earth remain locked into gravitational patterns. Three Iron Atlas tore through those expectations. It's like watching a car veer across a racetrack without obeying the lanes. Nothing in the local solar system could capture or control it. And then there was the angle. Its trajectory wasn't random chaos. It sliced through the inner system, tilted only about five degrees from the ecliptic plane, the flat disk where planets line up and orbit. For something supposedly arriving from far away and from any direction, aligning this closely with the solar system's plane is profoundly unlikely. Statistically, it's been estimated at about two chances in a thousand. Those aren't impossible odds, but they're narrow enough to raise eyebrows. It looked less like a random passage and more like a path someone might actually choose, though of course, chance can still explain it. Its route guaranteed something else remarkable. Over the next several months, Three-Eye Atlas is set to sweep by both Mars and Jupiter at distances that are closer than you would expect for an already unusual visitor. These encounters don't change its overall fate. It still has too much speed to be captured, but they add twists to its story. The fact that it arrives nearly in the same orbital plane as the planets makes those interactions sharper, as though it's weaving directly across their lanes rather than above or below them. By the time astronomers ran the numbers, it was clear. Even if nothing else about the object stood out, its journey through the solar system would already make it a curiosity for decades to come. A rare interstellar path, an improbably tight angle against the ecliptic, and surprisingly close passes by two major planets. That's a lot of coincidences for one icy fragment. Many were ready to label it a comet, shrug at the odds, and move on. But then came another discovery that kept the story alive. It wasn't just the orbit that stood out. The object's glow didn't behave as expected. Comets reflect sunlight in a way that tells you their size and composition. Astronomers use that brightness to estimate how big a nucleus must be to shine as much as it does. With three eyes, our atlas, those numbers didn't agree. Its brightness was out of proportion to the dimensions inferred from its motion. It looked too strong for the size it should have been. And even stranger, the pattern of its light refused to match the usual flickering of dust and ice. That single detail pushed a natural oddball into the realm of mystery. Here was a visitor not only racing through on a once-in-a-lifetime trajectory, but also glowing in a manner no comet should, which left everyone to 
ask what could possibly make a rock shine on its own, far out in the darkness of deep space. What if a space rock wasn't just reflecting sunlight, but shining by itself? That question drove astronomers to look deeper when they noticed the brightness of Three-Eye Atlas didn't match what its orbit suggested. Telescopes measure how much light an object gives off, then estimate its size. With Three-Eye Atlas, the glow was so strong that early models suggested a body over 20 kilometers wide. That would make it one of the largest interstellar objects on record. But that conclusion quickly ran into problems. Given its speed, the odds of a rock that massive entering the solar system from outside are vanishingly small. So either a statistical fluke had dropped a giant comet into view, or another explanation was needed. The Hubble Space Telescope helped sharpen the picture. With its sensitive instruments, it confirmed that the brightness varied in ways that didn't align with standard comet behavior. Normally, we expect sunlight bouncing off icy surfaces to scatter and form a predictable light curve. Dust jets, released as the ice sublimates into gas, create changes we can model. This object showed something different. The level of brightness didn't dip or rise in the patterns expected from a rotating body covered in ice and dust. Instead, it held steady over time. This suggested that something beyond simple reflection might be in play. Here's why that's puzzling. If the object were only a few kilometers across, the measured brightness would demand that it emit light rather than just bouncing it back. That simple shift reframes the entire discussion. We're no longer talking about a cold, inert rock reflecting a star's rays. We're confronted with the idea of an active source glowing in space, natural or artificial, that would make it special. Avi Loeb, a Harvard astrophysicist, has proposed a theory to explain this puzzle. He suggests that the object may be self-luminous. That means it could produce light through its own processes rather than acting like a mirror for sunlight. It's a bold claim, and not one made lightly. Loeb pointed to the data. The improbable brightness, combined with the low likelihood of such a massive body arriving at random, made the conventional explanation difficult to sustain. The numbers didn't lie. The common picture didn't fit neatly. To understand how extreme the idea is, consider the energy involved. For three eyes or Atlas to shine at its observed level, models suggest it would need to output power on the order of 10 gigawatts. That's roughly the energy production of multiple large power plants combined, radiating away every instant. Natural space rocks don't usually channel energy at that level. Typical comets glow by reflecting or by releasing faint chemical emissions. Neither comes close to gigawatt peaks. So where could that output come from? One suggestion is radioactive decay. Certain isotopes can release energy as they break down, and if 3 IS Atlas was unusually rich in them, perhaps that glow could be explained. But to reach 10 gigawatts, it would need concentrations far beyond what's been observed in asteroids or comets. Another idea is exotic chemistry, perhaps involving reactions that ignite long-lasting luminescence. But no such processes have been documented on scales this large. A third possibility, and the most provocative, is artificial illumination. If the object carried machinery, even something as simple as a reflective sail or a beaming device, then a glow of this strength could, at least in principle, be engineered. This is where the divide forms. Many astronomers lean toward caution, explaining that errors in the models or unseen dust effects could account for the anomaly. They note that every time strange data show up, the safest bet is still a natural process we haven't recognized. On the other side, a few researchers argue that with so many coincidences in orbit, brightness and alignment, maybe it's time to widen our definitions. Could 3 Atlas be evidence that we're not alone? Or does it simply spotlight gaps in our knowledge of icy bodies traveling between stars? Either way, the light forces an uncomfortable choice. If it's natural, it means entire categories of behavior among interstellar comets remain unexplored. If it's engineered, it could mark the first time humanity has witnessed an extraterrestrial signal sent not as radio waves, but as light in the sky. That possibility is why the conversation refuses to fade. Still, before leaping to conclusions, scientists worked on another approach. Instead of debating brightness alone, they turned to spectroscopy, a tool that can read the fingerprints of an object's surface materials. And when the first results came in, they didn't close the case. They opened another chapter. 
How do you tell the difference between an alien probe and an icy rock from another star? That question makes 3i Atlas more fascinating than any ordinary comet. Theories about its brightness set the stage, but to narrow down what it actually is, scientists turned to spectroscopy. This technique takes the light from an object and splits it into a spectrum, revealing chemical fingerprints hidden within. When researchers applied this tool to 3i Atlas, the results pointed strongly to toward a comet-like makeup. The signals showed clear markers of water ice, along with silicates, the rocky grains found in ordinary asteroids, and carbonates, which are minerals often linked to outgassed materials. On the surface, these readings paint the picture of a body carved from the same ingredients that make up most frozen wanderers. The detail that complicates this tidy picture is the character of the ice. Some of it appears unusually pristine. That matters because the long longer a comet travels through space, especially close to stars, the more its ices undergo chemical changes. Radiation darkens its surface, reactions strip away lighter molecules, and what remains tends to look processed. But in 3i Atlas, portions of the spectrum seem to be fresh and untouched by eons of exposure. This raises the puzzle of timing. Has it simply avoided much interaction on its journey between stars, or has it not been traveling as long as we think? If the latter, then when and where did it form, and how did it reach our system in such a direct trajectory? Natural explanations haven't disappeared. Astronomers like David Jewett point out that in many ways, 3i Atlas behaves like a textbook comet. Measurements of the dust close to its nucleus show production rates that align nicely with what's been modeled for icy bodies warmed by the sun. When the solar wind streams against it, the observed outflow looks consistent with jets from from sublimating ice. In this view, its activity is not extraordinary at all. Comets do strange things, yes, but the patterns we've seen here don't require rewriting physics. If anything, they confirm it. One counterpoint was raised around what wasn't detected. Normally, cometary spectra often show gases like Cn and C2. These molecules fluoresce when near a star, giving astronomers strong spectral lines to measure. In the case of 3 i Atlas, those signals were absent which some initially read as suspicious, but the catch is distance. At several astronomical units out, gas production is already weak. Even in comets from our own neighborhood, the absence of those lines isn't unusual at these ranges. So for most researchers, the missing molecules don't disprove a cometary nature. They simply fall into normal variants based on conditions. Still, the questions refuse to vanish. Avi Loeb has continued pointing at the bigger picture, the improbable geometry of the orbit, the steady brightness, and the fact that this path takes 3i Atlas near two major planets in quick sequence. Each anomaly could be explained away, but stacking them together challenges the idea that chance is doing all the work. When does coincidence start to look like intention? That is where the debate turns from chemistry and physics to probability and interpretation. At its simplest, it comes down to framing. From one side, 3i Atlas is a comet that just just happens to be unusual, and unusual cases always pop up when you look long enough. From the other side, 3i or Atlas is a series of low probability events bundled into a single object, a near perfect plane crossing, improbably pristine ices, and a power output that seems excessive for cold rock. Both views rest on real data. One leans on the stability of known science, the other on statistical oddities that may point to something manufactured. So here we we are caught in a standoff. If it's a comet, it is stretching what we thought was possible for interstellar visitors. If it's not, then it could be the first piece of technology built beyond our world that we have ever seen. Right now, the evidence can't tip fully in either direction, but this balance won't hold forever. What comes next may finally decide the story. New observations are lined up, from powerful infrared detectors to high-resolution cameras on orbiters already circling Mars. These two will peel away more detail, temperatures, dust patterns, perhaps even surface contours that could hint at structure. Any of these could force the argument one way or the other, leaving less room for debate. So the puzzle stands, comet or machine. The next round of data might not just add a line to astronomy textbooks. It could redraw the boundary between natural cosmic wanderers and artificial visitors. The mystery of all 3i Atlas is still wide open. What makes it exciting 
thing is that we're not reading an answer in a textbook. We're watching scientists puzzle it out as the data comes in. That real-time process shows how science works best, asking questions, testing ideas, and debating results. Whether the glow comes from unusual cometary behavior or something engineered, it stretches how we imagine interstellar visitors. Each new measurement could shift the story in one direction or the other. Soon, the next round of high-resolution observations may change how we think about comets or suggest something far greater.